Oh, right, here we go. The angels. This is the continue. This is the last, the last. Uh, this is the end of the mimer of the Lubavitcher Rebbe from 1959. Tafshin Yutet, and it's about <coughs> explaining the the story that's told in the Gomorrah that when Moshe Rabbeinu was on Mount Sinai, the angels said, "Don't." Give him the Torah, God. It's going to be a big mistake. Give your glory up here in heaven. And God said to Moshe, answer him. Give him an answer. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, you know what it says in the, in the, in the Ten Commandments? Angels. It says, I am God that took you out of Egypt. You angels have ever been in Egypt? Do you have any concept what that is? <clears throat> it says, don't steal, don't kill. You angels have any desire to do those things? You have what they call a yetzer hara, a evil impulse, destructive impulse. Yeah, destructive impulses. The angel said, Moshe, we love you. You got it. You gave exactly the right answer. <clears throat> so the Rebbe here explains, first of all, very simply, that the, the Torah was given in order to make a new thing in the world a new thing that had never been before creation. And that was called serving God. And not just, the angels also serve God. It says the Mal Malchia Shoret, they're the angels that serve God. But they don't serve God with all of their hearts. With all their hearts. They serve God because that's their nature. Their nature is to serve God. That's their nature. Like an ox, a horse. The nature of an ox, the nature of a horse is that it can be trained. An ox can be trained. A horse can be trained. Right? Cats, it's very hard to, 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 to tame cats. Dogs can be trained. Right? Squirrels. Eh. And then, everything has their nature to it. Right? A human being has his nature that he wants to be natural. It wants to be nature. That a human being can go against his nature and to actually serve God with all of his heart, be really interested in loving God. Not in order to go to heaven. That's natural. That's natural. A person wants to know what's going to be. I, you see people are dying, right? Uncle Fred died. Uncle Martin, right? Put him in the ground. Fell of infinite jest. He used to tell good jokes and things like that. Poor Yorick, right? And now he's he's gone. But what? Do, hey, one second. You look in the mirror and you think, "Wow, you know, I'm also going to be some way, some someday, somebody's going to be holding my skull." You know what's <coughs> what's going to be with me? You think, "Oh," and then somebody comes along and says, "Worry thou abouteth thine future." I said, "Yeah, man. I, yeah, what's going to go on? Come with with me to the heavenly gates." Right? Do this religion. Oh, this is pretty good. This is good. So that's natural that people worry about going to heaven. And some people say, don't worry about going to heaven. There's no such thing. But to serve God in this world with all of your heart, with all of your hearts, you know, there's thinking only about what God is going to get and not what I'm going to get. That's a novelty. Even though if you think about it, it's not such a novelty. If you think about it, it's the most obvious thing in the world. God is creating us. He's creating us every moment. He's creating us from pure love, just giving. And He's not only creating us, He's giving us eyes and ears and nose and mouth, and He's giving us a soul that we have senses, we have love, we have appreciation. God is giving everything that there is, He's creating all the time. So it sort of makes sense that, you know, we should at least give Him some appreciation, a little bit of appreciation, and stop thinking about ourselves. And <clears throat> we're only creations. To think about ourselves, but that's not the way God created us. God created people that they are selfish. As soon as they're born, <coughs> wah, wah, they're complaining and they're drawing. And they're, they're, right? That's the way, that's the nature people are. That's nature. And for a person, the only way that a person <coughs> can go against his nature is if he himself makes the decision and does hard work and goes against his own nature and asks Hashem to help him. God to help him to change his nature. 
So that we're going to see is going to be the big <coughs> one second. If you remember in the previous mimer that we learned, <coughs> excuse me, the previous mimer that we learned by the by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe about what was the novelty of Mount Sinai, if Abraham already knew the whole Torah, and finally in the end of the mimer, do you remember? It said that the novelty of Mount Sinai is that God gave us the ability to have Mesirud Nefesh. Do you remember that in the previous Mimer that we learned? The, the big novelty of Mount Sinai was before Mount Sinai there were commandments. Before Mount Sinai there was Mara. There were commandments. There were seven Noahide commandments. Before Mount Sinai, it says Abraham knew the whole Torah before it was given. Before the, 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 there was already Jewish identity. The Jewish gods, God took the Jews out of Egypt. What was given on Mount Sinai that Hashem personally had to come down? It was given the ability to be what's called Mesirut Nefesh. Self-sacrifice. The nature of a human being is to be selfish, to take this human nature of being selfish and saying, I am only going to do what God wants. I'm not going to do what, even if I lose everything, like Abraham. I'm going to do what God wants because God is the ultimate truth. He's the creator. He creates me. He knows what's best for me. God is good. Right? He's not didn't just do it to, to he was bored. Wanted to see people run around like the you know the what is it, the uh, Greek mythology, you know, the gods are sitting and laughing or whatever. <clears throat> okay, so we said yesterday that the difference between the angels, which are called the Ophanim. <clears throat> who they scream out to God and they're very excited. <clears throat> and the angels, which are called the seraphim, that they silently burn up to God, is that the seraphim are angels in the world, which is called the dimension of Bria, which is a higher dimension of awareness of God. And they are aware of God <clears throat> much more than the the uh, than these angels, which are called the Ophanim, the wheels. And these angels, which are called the wheels, in a way, they're not aware of God at all. They're just aware that the other angels in the upper worlds are excited about God and how good God is. And because of that, they get excited too. And they get all excited. <clears throat> this is, but their excitement, in a way, is much more genuine and total than the upper angels, because the upper angels are limited by their own awareness. By their own awareness. And the lower angels are not limited by their own awareness. In fact, they're not even aware at all. They just are aware that what they think and what they feel and what they're certain of is wrong. The lower angels, they feel, they think they, that they really exist. And suddenly they see the angels up there are all burning up. Right? And what are those angels burning up for? Because God is creating them every second. God is creating us every second. Ah! And they go berserk, right? They go wild. This is really true. God is creating us. Their so it says, even though they don't understand anything whatsoever, but in a way, their um, <clears throat> their devotion. What's up for a better word? What's the better word that their involvement? Oh, is more total than the upper angels. The upper angels are involved because they have a reason. Right? They feel something. They have a feel, and the lower angels, their excitement is yes. It starts off with a because, because there's upper angels. But suddenly they realize, wow, I really am totally out of it. You know, I really have no. I can't trust myself at all. The upper, the lower angels, they're just totally devoted and totally uh, surrendered. Oh, it sounds like you're describing something really about it's not going against that. Listen, it's like an it's like an animal. It's it's like an animal, <clears throat> an animal that he has a master. So an animal, a cow, a cow goes in a, a bull, whatever. So he's in the field. He eats grass. He lives. He sleeps. All of a sudden, somebody comes along and trains him. A horse. They came. They train horses. It used to be, you know, in in war, even in Napoleon. 
time of Napoleon? What was Napoleon? It was like 150 years ago, something like that. <clears throat> As uh, the main weapon of war was horses. People had horses. There were no tanks. There was no jeeps. Right? The main horses, that was the, the cavalry. That was the, the ultimate. There were cannons. There were cannons. But the real, one of the big tricks, the big you know power was the cavalry. What was cavalry? Horses. What do you mean horses? What, what does that mean, horses? You ever see a horse? Horse is a very scary thing. Horse. Horse is a very big horse. They, learned, they trained these horses that the horses weren't afraid of battle. And they would go rushing in into the, 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 the heat of the battle. And if you had horses and good cavalry, ooh, that was the best. What? In battle, I don't know, the police use horses. Police uses horses, right? The crowds that are the crowds, right? But the, the, an army that I think don't they use horses? I don't know. But in any case, the point of the matter is, is that a regular horse, who would dream that a horse could be trained? All of a sudden they found out a horse can be trained. Tremendous benefit can be brought from this horse. Horse will do things, a horse will be totally surrendered to its master. Infinitely, there's, it puts out its potential, its true potential, infinitely more than if you just let the horse run around in the fields and right there. Nowadays they have polo. I, I don't think I've ever seen the polo match in my life. But there's such a thing as polo. It's like the the, what is it, the sport of the kings or something. And huh? Rich guys. <laughs> and they and they 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 know how they ride and they this. Then there's also what is it called steeplechase? Anyway, they teach the horses to jump and so to do these eloquent things, these exquisite movements, and they're, they're very graceful <clears throat> things that a horse normally doesn't do. You know, the horse doesn't do. In other words, what what am I trying to say? Once the horse is trained, so then he can do things he never was thought possible. Something like this is with the these angels. Their nature is that once they, that God creates them, their nature is that once they're alone, eh, they're angels. Whatever they do, as soon as they feel the the uh, they hear the angels, the upper worlds yelling and the burning up, so they start going crazy. Right? All of a sudden, they're new. Potential comes out. It's like a Seuss. I'm, I'm like a horse. A horse in the field. Oh, a horse. A fair day is in the field. He eats. He does what he does. All of a sudden, somebody comes and trains him. He's in the battle and he's fighting. And he's... New energy comes out. So it's, it's true. It's part of his nature. It is part of his nature. Hashem creates him in that nature. But nevertheless, it's revealing a new nature. A new, a new how do you say, excitement that the angel didn't have. His nature is just like a copy. Okay. Right. <clears throat> which is, we're going to see what's, what's the thing, which is not the truth with the human being. A human being, especially a Jew, has a Yetzer Hora. Right? Yetzer Hora. And the Yetzer Hora of a Jew, right, is totally, you can't train it. You're not going to train it. Maybe to a certain degree you can. You're going to train it. Yeah, we're going to Right. The only, all, you can do, all you can do with it is introduce it to God. And once it becomes introduced to God, then a person can make a decision. Listen, maybe there's something more real. Maybe there's God is creating my Yetzer Hara, He's creating my destructive impulses. And maybe I can... It's a process. But the, the end of the process is not just stopping doing bad, right? The, 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 the addict who stops being an addict. But to transform it, to start loving God. Oh, that's a whole different world. You imagine taking all the drug addicts and all the alcoholics and all the all these you know gambling addicts and things like that, and all of a sudden all of their enthusiasm they have for their addiction becomes an enthusiasm for serving the Creator of the universe, for making the world a better place. Oh, it's a wonderful. It's an idea. Let's go. Hine, al derech I have something like the difference. Bain. Oh, let's take a break. A break.